I mean, I'm of course strong believer, advocate in nuclear disarmament. I think you know we are we are on the path of self-destruction if we if we do not change course and move into a world that have a global system of security that does not depend on nuclear weapons. And uh, I think everybody's coming in that direction. Again, if you see now people like Henry Kissinger or George Shultz who have been, you know, Cold War. Uh, warriors now being apostles of nuclear disarmament. I mean, they they've come to that realize that uh, that as they said, nuclear weapons are becoming decreasingly eff effective and increasingly hazardous. We still have nine countries who have nuclear weapons. and continue to insist on modernizing their arsenals. And that's also not sustainable, you know, because with this dissemination of technology, you cannot have nuclear haves and nuclear have-nots. You cannot have, yeah. I need nuclear weapons for my own security. It's absolutely crucial, but I do not want anybody to touch even the technology. I mean, the Iranian situation is a good example. You know, Iran is being told you cannot even touch the technology. You should not even have the know-how. But we can sit on, God knows, like 9,000 nuclear warheads in the US or whatever. So that is not sustainable any longer. You know, I would certainly like to go again on record uh, here uh, with my objection to the Indian nuclear weapons program, which I have opposed from the beginning, and I feel very unhappy that India went ahead with it, and which uh, then resulted in Pakistan also having its nuclear weapon program. Uh, so the nuclear weapon race between India and Pakistan has not added either to global security putting it very mildly, nor has it increased security on the subcontinent. I should say, in, in fairness to India, I mean, India for, for many years uh, uh, stuck to its guns not to go the nuclear yeah. weapons route. I, I remember the Indian National Security Advisor told me, encourage India to go for mm -hmm. nuclear weapons mm -hmm. to counterbalance China, China in, the, sure. in, the, in the 60s. And India, India decided not to go that route, and for 20 years at least, or, or more, you know, uh, continued to preach nuclear disarmament. They have realized, and that's again, I come to the, have the have not, that nobody is really making good on their commitment to go for nuclear disarmament. No. The countries who have subscribed to the non-proliferation treaty did not. Uh, China continued to get all the technology they want. India was under tremendous sanctions because they haven't joined you know, the non-proliferation treaty. Uh, so they decided to go with the, you know, with the crowd. I disagree you know, with their decision, but, but I also understand that in that kind of environment, uh, why they took that decision. And, and many other will take that decision if we do not change course. I think that people are absolutely crucial in saying, you know, our security, you know, is not really based on nuclear weapon. Our security is based on human rights, on education, on, you know, new technology and we should not waste our resources spending that much money. If you do not continue to then chart a path to move toward nuclear disarmament with concrete action and not just rhetoric, you know, you will end up with more countries having nuclear we weapons. And then the odds of being this weapon used accidentally, intentionally, the odds will increase exponentially. I will end up, you know, wiping our, our civilization.